In this video, I'm looking at the track Whip It by Devo. And I think this is the first time I've looked at a Devo song on this channel. And I suppose this is an obvious place to start. It was quite a big hit for them. And that was helped by a rather saucy video that was given a lot of airplay in the early days of MTV. Now I'm going to begin by playing the entire track for you. And apologies, I've not made a bit more effort with my look today. I feel like I should be doing this wearing a, an energy dome hat and the kind of radiation suits or whatever it was they used to wear. But maybe if I look at another Devo song in the future, I'll try and get that together. But uh, let's get started. So Devo often described as a new wave band or a synth pop band, but a lot of their music is just totally unclassifiable and they really do have a unique and bonkers approach to things. And as I said, this one came out in 1980. It was a hit single, also appears on the album Freedom of Choice, which I think was their third album. And this album saw their music taking a little bit more of a kind of polished and synthy turn but there's still plenty of great guitar playing on this album and if you are interested in finding out a bit more about the recording and production of this one there is a great article in Sound on Sound which is well worth checking out. Now there were two guitar players in Devo, Bob 1 and Bob 2. You've got Bob Mothersbaugh and Bob Casale. Uh, not sure exactly who is playing what on this particular track. It sounds like the guitars are double tracked in places so maybe both players were playing on this one. If you look at live footage I think Bob 1 is doing the guitar work while uh, Bob 2 is playing some some synths on this one but um, anyway let's get down to business and I'll show you how this one is played nothing too technical going on here just some great well constructed riffs there are one or two nice little subtleties in there which I'm going to point out as well we're in the key of E uh, E minor ish for this tune it's not really a tune that's about chords or harmony it's very much a riff based song and this single note riff is played in unison by the guitar and the bass. In fact we've got three or four different riffs throughout the course of the song and apparently the riff was inspired by Oh Pretty Woman by Roy Orbison. So 
but you can certainly hear that. I mean, it's played a little bit faster in this song. The notes aren't quite exactly the same. But the, the first riff you hear goes like this. So starting with the open low E string, then you've got A, B, and D. So frets five, seven, and five. And then we're leaving some space. Space is really important in this tune, I think. You've just got those notes from the riff, space for the drums, and then there's a synth riff in the gaps. So the, the production and the arrangement of this song is really clever. I mean, it seems quite simple on the surface, but if you actually analyze the, the production and the arrangement, there's some really clever stuff going on. So that's our opening riff. Uh, it sounds good with just a little bit of palm muting, I think, just to, to give those notes a little bit more bite, I think. One, two, three, four. And I think that's played four times. And then we're adding on a few extra notes, so filling in some of that space. We hear this. So we've got the, the same opening as before. Then we've got open A string twice and G and F sharp played on the low E string. So if we put the two halves of the riff together. And there are a few ways that you can play these notes. You can play them in some different places. I've gone with what Bob One seems to be doing in, in live footage. I've kind of nerdily looked at quite a lot of live videos. He definitely starts up here. And then we've got the open A string. And we're down in the, the, the second and third frets. Then we're back up again. I mean, you could go play that A as a fretted A instead of the open A string. It doesn't really make too much difference, but I think the riff does flow nicely if you're playing that open A string. That's riff two. Then we've got another riff, which is just developing this riff a little bit further. We're filling in even more of the space. So we've got this. So the extra bit that we're filling in there is uh, we're playing this on the D string. So sliding up to the fourth fret, this F sharp, playing that twice, E, and then an open D. And then the riff is carrying on as before. Moving on to the chorus, and we've got these descending power chord arpeggios. So So starting off with a, a C power chord, I'm playing this up at the 8th fret. Again, I'm just going off video footage. This is definitely how Bob One plays it. You know, you could play some of these with 5th with string roots, but I, I'm sticking with uh, the way it seems to be done on the recording. We've got just a C power chord, so fret 10, 10 and 8, just starting on the D string and then descending down to the, to the low E string. Just moving that shape down to the third position. This is a G power chord. Got a D power chord at the tenth fret. We've just got a single note, just a single A, and then we're back to that C power chord, and then that's repeated. That's the chorus part. So Finishing off the chorus, just playing that C shape a couple more times. What else have we got then? I think after the first chorus, there's another verse which is based on that extended riff. And then we've got a little power chord section, kind of a bridge section, I suppose, which goes like this. So quite simple, we've just got an E power chord. Good. Low E string, 5th fret on the A string, then to 
G power chord G5, so I'm just playing it with two, two notes here, so G and a D, playing that twice, moving that shape over to the, the fifth string for a C5, then we're repeating that, but this time we're ending on a D power chord up at the fifth fret, so. Now that's repeated twice, then we've got another new section which I think is a really clever variation on the main riff. It goes like this. And you'll notice that we've actually changed time signature here. We've actually gone into more of a, a six beat per bar kind of feel, so six, four. And it's, I suppose what's going on is we're kind of compressing that main riff, leaving out a bit of that space. And it's just giving the song a bit more urgency at this point. It's a really kind of clever songwriting device. You're kind of coming up with a new section to the song just by repurposing an existing riff, I suppose. So we've got... So it's exactly like the main riff of the tune, that the counting on that is one and two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six and... and you don't have to count all of this stuff out if you don't want. It's best just to feel this kind of thing. With six, four, it just kind of feels like uh, the riff comes round on itself a bit sooner than you might expect, as I say, creating that sense of urgency. So, very cool variation on the main riff, I think. And that's more or less it. I think we go around for another verse, another chorus. There's a little ending section, but it's all based on stuff that I've already talked about. So, uh, give this one a go. It's a really fun one to play. Not too hard. It's fairly beginner friendly, this one, I think. But as I'm saying quite a lot it's actually quite hard to do the easy stuff really well so the kind of things you want to pay attention to on this one are your tone and your touch just getting everything feeling really tight and in time let me take you through the gear that i'm using in this video i don't know a great deal about devo's gear or what they would have used on this recording there is quite a lot of good devo gear info online though including a rig rundown with the two bobs which is well worth watching but uh, sadly i don't have a potato shaped spud ocaster guitar i'd love to but today i'm actually using my vox virage which i haven't played for a long time in my videos i actually got it fixed and set up quite recently so i thought i'd give it a, an outing in this video and it's a really cool guitar i think i'm going to be using this uh, quite a bit more in the future and um, I, mean, I got it quite a few years ago I got a really good deal on it it was quite a kind of high-end vox when it came out very expensive and uh, didn't really take off for one reason or another but it's an interesting guitar it's got kind of semi hollow body it's kind of got these these tone chambers in it it's got interesting pickups each of which are controlled by these three-way switches and you've kind of got three sounds in each pickup you've got a humbucker and then a kind of fat single coil and then more of a, a single coil sound so it's a pretty versatile guitar i'm just using the bridge humbucker today playing through my fender princeton and using a, a couple of pedals using my j rocket archer just for a little bit of overdrive i think the, the guitar tone on the recording is fairly clean but you can detect a little bit of dirt so using the the, the archer for that and then just a touch of, of chorus as well i'm not sure whether there is any chorus on the original recording maybe it's just double track but i think a bit of chorus sounds good to me that's it for this video. Tab is going to be up on my Patreon page along with my backing track. And I did spend about two hours trying to get a decent whip crack sound for my backing track. So I hope that's appreciated. And uh, you can download that from my Patreon page. Pay what you like to get access to, to that, the backing track, the tab, and all my other huge archive of tabs and backing tracks. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.